What up, Del One Pride? My name is Anthony Fitzpatrick. I am the Brit with Grit, and this is Lions Nation Unites, the community created by Detroit Lions legend Herman Moore, where a whole host of content creators can come together to discuss everything Detroit Lions with you Lions faithful out there. Um, if you could do me a favor, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe the channel, help share it out there, help it grow. If you've noticed recently, there's a whole host of us trying to do content for the channel now. Hopefully you notice all the hard work that's going in there and hopefully you are enjoying it all. So why am I here today? This weekend, the Detroit Lions for the third year in a row are heading to Jerry World. Yes, they're going to Dallas to take on the Cowboys, and we are here to take a look at some of the key matchups for this game. And uh, this is one we really want, guys, right? After last year, the, ine the ineligibility call with Dan Skipper, that whole ruckus over that, it felt like the one that got away. So... How can we ensure that this one doesn't get away from us? We've got three points here today that I'm going to go over, and then maybe one of a lighter-hearted one at the end. But yeah, going to Dallas is never an easy assignment. They are 3-2 and two on the year, coming off the back of two straight wins on the road. They're coming back home. What can the Lions do to win this game? So first up, and this might be a point that a lot of you out there are worrying about in regards to this game. So we've got the Dallas pass offense versus the Lions secondary. So Dallas are not great at running the football this season. In their five games so far, their leading rushes per game have mustered up yardage of 40 yards versus the Browns, 30 versus the Saints, 32 versus the Ravens, 46 versus the Giants, and 87 in the most recent game against Pittsburgh. On the season, they have just 410 rushing yards and two touchdowns in five games, running at an average of just 3.5 yards per clip. So this Dallas, Dallas offense is predicated on its passing game, and it's this that we do need to shut down. C.D. Lamb took us for... 227 yards and a touchdown on just 13 receptions last year, as we all know, which ended up being one of the decisive factors of that game. And and they've got quite a few threats on that team this year. So C.D. Lamb is nearly at 400 yards with two touchdowns. He has 60-plus receiving yards in every game thus far. You've got Jalen Tolbert. He's coming out of his shell as the emerging wide receiver, too. In Dallas, he has 247 yards, two touchdowns. He's coming off a big performance against the Steelers, nearly 90 yards and a touchdown, which helped them win that game. You've got Jake Ferguson leading an underrated tight end room for the Cowboys. He's got 240 receiving yards on the year. They've also got former Michigan tight end Luke Shoemaker. For those of the Wolverines variety who remember him, he's an annoying mid-range threat if he gets the ball in his hands. And they've started giving receptions to their rookie out of Minnesota, Brevin Span Ford. He's 6'7 and 270 pounds. I did some work on him in the pre-draft process. He is a matchup nightmare in the red zone. So he needs to be accounted for. Now they're starting to use him in this offense. And then, of course, they've got Rico Dowdle and the fullback, Hunter Lupke, doing work in the passing game out of the backfield. They have 200 yards between them. Dowdle has a couple of receiving touchdowns. So the secondary is going to have its work cut out in this one. You have got to keep the big chunk plays down to a minimum to stop them getting offensive momentum. So in the most recent game, Pittsburgh allowed 350 plus yards through the air, which meant they had to lighten the box. And for the first time this season, Dallas were able to run it a little bit more and take the pressure off Dak. They were only able to get to him twice so you want to stop that happening in this game Dallas on the season they've thrown the ball 200 times and rushed it just 116 we want to keep that offensive imbalance intact because it's going to allow the defensive line to tee off on an offensive line that quite frankly is suspect for them they're starting rookies at left tackle in Tyler Gump. Tyler Guyton, he's a development project right now. And you've got Cooper Beeb at center. It's a position that he never played in college, and he's having an adjustment period to this. And they're highly undisciplined. 
The offensive line has been pinged for 11 penalties in just the last two games. So you pin their ears back, they start making a lot of mistakes. And Dak's got two multi-interception games this year so far. So if you can rattle him, he's going to offer you up some turnovers. So this is kind of the, you know, the traditional, you've got to shut down their big passing game and then it stops them running the ball. They've got to keep throwing at you and they're going to keep making mistakes. So the secondary's really got to be up to speed here. We can't allow them to get big chunk plays down the field, open that run game up against us. You want to keep them contained. That's how you're going to be able to beat them in this one. So with Terry and Arnold, Carlton Davis, for me, I like the way they're playing. I like them being a bit more physical. I like them getting in the faces of the receivers. It's going to give up a few penalties, fine, but... Nine pass breakups in the last game. We want to see that in this one. We want to keep denying Dak, hitting us down the field. And for the most part, we've been successful at that recently. So this is going to be huge for us in this game. I have no concerns about our run defense against this team whatsoever. We've got to hold up against the pass and we've got to make sure we get it right because they do have legitimate threats in this game. The second key matchup I've got here... The Lions rushing offense versus the Cowboys rushing defense. So it's an interesting read looking at the stat line of the leading rushers for every game against the Cowboys so far. So in the three games that the Cowboys have won against the Cleveland Browns, their best rusher, Jerome Ford, 12 carries, 44 yards and a touchdown against the Giants, Devin Singletary, 14 carries, 24 yards and against the Steelers, Najee Harris, 14 carries, 42 yards. Not one guy broke the 50-yard barrier. Now look at the two games that they've lost. Against the New Orleans Saints, Alvin Kamara had 20 carries, 115 yards, and three touchdowns. Against the Baltimore Ravens, Derek Henry, 25 carries, 151 yards, and two touchdowns now not that it's a be all and end all but there is a very clear correlation between being able to run the football and beating the Dallas Cowboys and not being able to run the football and losing to the Dallas Cowboys the last two games against the Giants and Steelers they've only scored 20 points in both games and they've defended such low totals by making the offense they face one dimensional and easier to defend against now for us Frank Ragnow has been cleared for action this weekend, meaning the offensive line is back up to full strength. And we need it to be. The key to cracking this Dallas defense is breaking its interior with the run game and opening up that softer center. It also puts quarterbacks in better positions against the secondary that can, on its day, get a lot of turnovers against you. And talking of quarterbacks... This leads to the third key matchup in this game. So this is about Jared Goff as much as it's going to be about the rushing game. So rushing the ball is only one half of the job to take down this Cowboys defense. It's no mistake that, again, in both defeats, the Cowboys have been pummeled by some more deeper level air raids set up as a result of running the ball well, resulting in a load of box, creating vulnerability, in the secondary, for example, in the Saints game, Derek Carr, 11 completions for 243 yards. So the wide receiver, Shahid, four catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. That's 24 yards per catch. Chris Olave, four catches for 81 yards at 20 yards per carry, uh, catch. Sorry. And Alvin Kamara, the running back, two catches for 65 yards and a touchdown. That's 32.5 yards per Per catch, And then against the Ravens, Lamar Jackson had 12 completions for 182 yards. And in that game, he had a shot to Nelson Aguilar, one shot for 56 yards. For Charlie Kohler, his tight end, they had one completion for 30 yards. To Derrick Henry, he had a completion for 23 yards. So implementing the run for those two teams opened up huge opportunities downfield and both teams took advantage of it. Now, not every play was a, a deep shot bomb downfield, but opportunities are presented for less well-protected screens, your slant routes, your deep shots emerge. When the Cowboys have to sell out against the run, 
you have to be ready for these opportunities. And Jared Goff, he's now got a growing arsenal of guys to be able to hit downfield. Most notably, Jamison Williams. He's having his breakout year. And then Tim Patrick came to the party last week as well. So this is just as big a part of winning as running the football. If Goff is accurate and is able to keep hitting his downfield passes, then the Cowboys cannot bring extra men into the box to help shore up against our run game. So we can just go back to run in the football. You keep this lovely little momentum there where we're running the ball on them. They can't afford to bring extra men up because if we're hitting them downfield, they're going to get burnt that way. So if you find the perfect level for this offense between run and pass, the Cowboys struggle against it big time. And that's the two ways that they've been taken down this year so far. So the three keys, the secondary has to hold up against the pass here. It just has to. We cannot allow this run game if there's any opportunity to breathe whatsoever. You've got the Lions run game. If we're able to break them open, history says that the Cowboys are going to lose. And then Jared Goff, if he's able to start hitting these downfield passes as a result of us running the ball well and then bringing more men up to stop it, then we're going to have opportunities to hit downfield. And we've got the perfect guys to be able to do that. I smell a big game for Jameson Williams in this one. And I mentioned I have one more to finish this off. And this should never be a serious key matchup, but it is something that can affect this game. And it's a very simple one. The Detroit Lions versus the refs. Now, as we know in the last one, the ineligible call was bogus and it did us in and ultimately ended up costing us the game. But we've got to take this game out their hands. Do not give the refs the opportunity to influence this game. Keep things disciplined. No silly off-ball penalties. JMO, I love you and your strutting image on the field. I did not mind the dunk last week. Just don't be doing anything like that at Jerry World this week. Have one week off. Make absolutely sure that you don't give them a chance to influence this game. And most importantly, declare the eligibility of your players properly. Even if you've got to tell them five times, tell them five times. Then we will not have a repeat of last year. And actually, in a flip potentially here, the Cowboys... Coming off two road games, they have been penalized 22 times. So if anything, we might actually be able to flip the script here. That offensive line is a penalty factory right now. So Aaron Glenn should have a huge bullseye on them, bring some extra pressure because they panic, they grab, they false start, keeps putting them behind the chains, keeps ending drives. Maybe a good chance to test out some NASCAR packages here with Aiden Hutchinson, because I think you might get a lot of success with these. But certainly, do whatever you can to take this out of the ref's hands. And that is everything I have for this one. Do you agree with me that it's the Lions secondary and then a good balance of the rushing and passing offense that are the keys to crack the Dallas Cowboys? Or do you have a different opinion? Is there something else that I am missing here? Let us know in the comments below and I will be right back with you on that. I do like to try and respond to every comment on there. So always happy to converse with you about the Detroit Lions. And that is everything for me today. As I say, if you haven't already, please do think about liking and subscribing Lions Nation Unite, helping the channel to grow. We really do appreciate you. And of course, if you want to see a little bit more about me, you can find me at Roar of the Lions UK. We are a group of Detroit Lions fans from across the pond. We are heavily passionate about the Detroit Lions and is certainly a big part of One Pride. So do come and give us a check out there. Just remains to me to thank all of you for watching for this. I shall see you again next time. Go One Pride.